Hello there, Kyle Katarn here, and it is Wednesday, my dudes. Let's do the comics. First up, we have Star Wars issue 55 by Kieran Gillen and Salvador LaRocca. Firstly, the cover art is dope. It was done by David Marquez and Tamar Vondelin. This is part six of Hope Dies. The Rebel fleet is finally starting to get power back to their cruisers, and now they have to decide whether to make a break for it and go back and save more potential allies. Right out of the gate, an epic sequence as Dodonna personally leads a broadside attack against the Executor in a series of stunning visuals, and it's clear that Salvador La Roca is pulling out all the stops for his final issue. In terms of ships, anyway, but uh, we'll talk about that later. The daring rescue plan goes off without a hitch, and the fleet slowly returns to full power and begins to fight back. It was fun getting to see Hera kick some ass from her rebel cruiser named the Geist, which was a nice little nod to rebels. I absolutely love the shot of the rebel fleet mid-hyperspace jump with the Executor just looming in the foreground. Yeah, these last couple of issues we've had some top-notch artwork. Han Solo's X-Wing is disabled, and Luke comes up with a daring rescue plan involving a Kazar Fire-class carrier cruiser from the Star Wars Armada game and also from Rebels. That was a real treat for me. I've always loved that ship's design. Okay, so Salvador La Roca has done a lot of things right in this arc, in terms of ship design, the artwork, but this one panel of Maiority here cannot be ignored. Seriously, what the, what the fuck am I looking at? What is this? Okay, moving on. Jan Dodonna is dead. He went out like a boss, made the ultimate sacrifice. Now, we sure have lost a lot of Episode Four originals in this arc, um, and General Draven from Rogue One as well. Now, I know from the Rebel Files book that Jan Dodonna personally ordered the mission that led to the discovery of Hoth, but I'm thinking they're either going to retcon that in the book like they are with the General Draven problem from the previous issue, or they're just going to say that Dodonna ordered that mission before this arc took place. Either way, it's not a glaring problem they can easily get around. One way or another, we're definitely leading into the Empire Strikes Back era rebellion, and the general feeling is much more grim and desperate. The issue ends with Han turning to Sana Staros for help. Sana Staros is really a hit or miss character in my opinion, it really depends on who's writing her. Kieran Gillen did a really good job with Sana Staros uh, during the Doctor Aphra series, and so I'm pretty confident that he's going to do a good job here. I have yet to be disappointed in his writing, so Charles Soule's rendition of Sana Staros, not so much my taste. So aside from the major continuity errors in the previous issue, I thought this arc was great. The stakes felt high, it really felt like a movie level series of events. Excited to see what they bring us next. Next up, Star Wars Adventures is bringing us something new and awesome just in time for October. It's Tales from Vader's Castle, number one. This story is called The Haunting of the Ghost by Kavan Scott, Derek Charm, and Chris Finoglio. A rebel crew has to make an emergency landing to repair their ship, and of all the unlucky planets in the galaxy, they land on Mustafar. Not wanting to leave the ship, the droid tries to convince the others by telling them a story of when the ghost crew encountered a crashed ship in an asteroid field and ended up being haunted by a space ghost from coast to coast. The ghost is a series of creepy things like turning off the lights, laughing in the dark, opening the bay doors and almost sucking Kanan out into space. But my favorite moment was Chopper being possessed by the ghost and hitting Hera with this evil monologue in the cockpit. It was a hilarious visual. I just imagined this booming evil Christopher Lee-esque voice coming out of the droid. It was pretty awesome. Hera straight up uses reverse psychology on an evil space ghost and manages to trick it into getting trapped into one of Kanan's holocrons. Flash forward back to the rebel crew on Mustafar, their ship has been swallowed by the lava and they're forced to take refuge in the only building they can find, Vader's Fortress. There's no way that will go badly for them, I'm sure. Tales from Vader's Castle number one was thoroughly enjoyable and if the rest of the series is going to be as campy as this one was, we're in for a treat. That's it for the comics this week. Thanks for watching, everybody. Check out the rest of the channel for more reactions and reviews. Leave me a comment if you've got a question or something to say, and as always, may the Force be with you.